Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Good morning and God bless you richly. Peace to you and all yours and peace to our beloved nation Nigeria. Welcome to our worship service online. Hope you are blessed by the ministration of the New Dawn Choir. Today I have a word from heaven. Those who are familiar with our ministry know that I do not say such except it is true. I woke up very early this morning with a song in my spirit, and as I was singing the song, I was filled with so much joy, and the Spirit of God spoke to me from Psalm 65, verse 1 to 5. Psalm 65, verse 1 to 5. Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion, and to you the vow shall be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. Verse number five. By awesome deeds in righteousness, you will answer us, O God of our salvation. You who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of the far off sea. Stop there. By awesome deeds in righteousness, you will answer us, O God of our salvation. <laughs> you who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of the far off seas. You and I know that in the face of this COVID-19 pandemic, the best of scientists, the best of virologists, Whatever name or nomenclature there in the medical field, I've not been able to come with an answer. But there's an answer from heaven this day. By awesome deeds in righteousness, God will answer us. The same way COVID-19 pandemic hit the world is the same way it will disappear suddenly in the name of Jesus. But before then, I want you to put your house in order Sit upright and listen to me because I have a word from heaven. This day by awesome deeds in righteousness, our God will answer us. He is the God of salvation and the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of the fire of sea. So what word is coming out of here is not only going to apply to your situation, my situation, to the church within our country, but it will be a global phenomenon phenomenon, like Jeremiah said, O earth, O earth, hear the word of the Lord. God Almighty will answer us today in the mighty name of Jesus. When I mentioned he will answer us today, I remember my mother. We were in church in the early days of the Lateran Assembly before we became Citadel Global Community Church long ago. The people were singing today, 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 today. Jesus will answer me today, 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 today. To. We got home and my mother was filled with joy. She was laughing. He said, I like the song they sang in the church today. I said, what song, mama? He said, today, 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 today. Jesus will answer you today, today. I said, mama, it's not today, it's today. He said, whatever. Today, my God will answer you in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father in heavens, we thank you for yet another opportunity to gather at the foot of the cross, to learn of you. We bring you honor and glory and praise and wholesome worship because you are worthy. You are worthy of our praise. This day, let the entrance of your world bring light and understanding to the simple. And by awesome deed in righteousness, answer us. Thank you for healing our land and thank you for turning this situation around for the better. For every family under the sound of my voice and to everyone who hereafter listen to your glory and praise, we, we pray. We receive illumination, inspiration and revelation and let the entrance of your world bring light and understanding to the simple. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart and the hearts of your people be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today we shall continue with part three of the message titled, Living Beyond the Reach of the Enemy. Living Beyond the Reach of the Enemy. In the past two sessions, we spent quality time on Gilead and its healing balm. 
in the first dimension. Then we progress to Goshen, a country within a country with remarkable, miraculous differences that distinguish Goshen and those who dwell in Goshen from those in Egypt in the midst of social, economic, and political upheavals. Second dimension. And then we rounded up with Zion, being the third dimension, our place of ultimate preservation and protection, totally off limits to demons and all the sicknesses and diseases of this world, by whatsoever name they may be called. Our focus today, however, is on the subject many of us studied in our primary and secondary school days that we probably have put into very little use since we left school. I'm speaking about geography. And I will show you that beyond the science of geography, there is geography in the spirit. The singular objective for this message is to help us all live and operate completely outside of the range of the wicked one, far away from sicknesses, far away from diseases, far away from viruses, by whatever name or nomenclature, and far away from economic hardship or poverty. Please tell your neighbor, if you are alone, affirm it to yourself. There is geography in the spirit. There is geography in the spirit. Now let's go to definition of geography. <laughs> Webster Dictionary defines geography as the science of the earth. It is broadly divided into two. Number one, physical geography, which deals with the composition of the earth's surface and the distribution of its features. And number two, human geography, which includes economic, political, and social geography, and is concerned essentially with the changes wrought by man on his environment. However, unknown to many, there's also geography in the spirit. This is well understood by missiologists, missionaries, and intercessors who over the years have engaged in spiritual mapping in order to deal with territorial spirit, such as the Prince of Persia and the Prince of Greece in the days of Daniel. Let's look at Daniel chapter 10 and see what happens in the spirit realm when a saint who is in tune with God begins to pray. Daniel 10 verse 1, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel. You see, that's the beginning of prophetic intercession. When you're in spiritual warfare, you do not know what heaven is saying. You do not hear what heaven is broadcasting. You are troubled by what you are seeing and you are praying vigorously. But once the word is revealed to you, you change gear from spiritual warfare into prophetic intercession. And you can say like Elijah, I've heard the sound of the abundance of rain because you have heard it. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. You are listening to me this morning, <laughs> and you are full of all kinds of trouble and anxiety because you know what God is about to do in our country, but it appears the appointed time is long. But he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks, 21 days. I ate no pleasant food. He had some food, but not really pleasant one. No meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now, on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was guarded with gold of Ephesus. His body was like burial, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. <laughs> For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. We are in that season now. <laughs> when the going gets tough, only the tough will get going. Therefore, I was left alone when I saw this great vision. 
And no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words, and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. That's called absolute surrender. When you don't know what to do, do nothing. Just stay there and wait for him to speak to you. Suddenly, a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and have come because of your words. Please pause there. That's fine. Listen to me this morning. This is not time for frivolity. It's not time for, for business as usual. Now that we cannot do parties anymore, we have changed gear to Zooming. And almost every day, I'm receiving invitation to Zooming, 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 Zooming. Well, I'm going to let you know that I love you with all of my heart. But if I receive your invitation and don't zoom in, it's because I'm seeking the face of the Lord. This is a time of sobriety. We must rejoice with those who rejoice. Yes, we must celebrate. Yes, but listen to me. Don't fill your life with activities that will just drain you spiritually because there are activities that drain spiritual energy and there are activities that build it up. Let everything be done decently and in order. Motumosi. Don't let's feel our lives. We have re removed one style of celebration. Now we are replacing with another. And every day, pram, 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 zoom, 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 zoom. What's the matter? Calm down. This man was on his knee for 21 days. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Imagine if he had prayed three days and he left the place. He knew something was going on on the inside of him. There was an appointed time for the thing, but it's prolonged. And he began to seek the face of God rather than complaining and murmuring. Why was the answer not forthcoming? Why was the thing not immediately fulfilled? The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold... Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Listen to this. The prince of Persia withstood him. The kings of Persia were doing their own. Daniel was praying. It takes a prince to bind the prince. When the right time comes, Michael showed up, and the prince of Persia was shifted. I'm coming back to that today. Even if that's all we do today, I'll be fulfilled in my heart because the enemy can be shifted. Now I've come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision refers to many days yet to come. When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision my sorrows have overwhelmed me and I've retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. Are you in that situation today that you are down, 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 and uh, you don't even know what to do, and you are overwhelmed? God's hand will touch you today in the name of Jesus. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man greatly beloved, fear not. Peace to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened. As you hear me today, be strong in the, in the Lord and in the power of his might in the name of Jesus. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak for you have strengthened me. Then he said, do you know why I've come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I've gone forth, indeed, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one opposes me against this except Michael, your prince. Wow. There you have it in Daniel 10, verse 1 to 21. 
the cosmic battles over a nation or region can be kick-started by those who know their God and to whom his plans and purposes are revealed. What gladdens my heart in this story of Daniel the prophet is that the devil can be sheeted from any geographical, lo geographical location by those who follow after righteousness. This is a privilege of those who dwell in Zion. Don't think only of Zion as a place of protection and preservation of limits to the devil. Don't think of that alone. With privileges come responsibilities. Responsibility is the price of greatness. What is the responsibility of those who dwell in Zion? They are equipped to shape the enemy from their landscape and in the skies over their land. They can pour the skies over their land and turn their wilderness into the Garden of Eden with their prophetic intercession. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 1 to 3. Listen to me, you will follow after righteousness. I've taught you for more than 30 years that you can win by righteousness and it is better to be a failure if you are going to compromise your value in order to win. No, you can win by righteousness. Listen to me, you will follow after righteousness. You will seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. The next thing the Bible begins to say after he had showed you your roots, where you came from or where you are from, from Abraham who is hewn out of the rock, no longer made of the dust of the earth. Then he's changed gears. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all our waste places. It will make a wilderness like Eden and a desert like the garden of the Lord. Can you imagine that God can turn wilderness to become like Eden and, uh, and desert to become like the garden of the Lord? If you don't believe that, go to Dubai. Go and see what has happened there. And yet you will not call that a Christian country. You will call it a, an, an Islamic country. Call it what you like. The truth is, they're doing some things there that we are not doing. The better days are ahead. The best days of this nation are ahead of us. For the Lord will come for Zion. He will comfort all our waste places. He will make our wilderness like Eden and our desert like the garden of the Lord. I once sat with the minister of transport in Dubai many years ago in our missionary endeavor. I met with him. I said, tell me what is the difference between Islam that is practiced in your country and the one that is practiced in our country. He said the same, but our leaders are different. And what did he say? He said, their leaders are like lion. When they catch an animal, they eat part of it and leave the rest for the people. And I said, how about us? He said, your leaders are like hyenas. They kill on the animal, pin it down, eat what they can, and take the rest and hang it on top of a tree where nobody can touch it. That's why stupid fellows steal money from here and send it abroad and we rejoice. Instead of, 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 of rising up against such things in our land with, 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 with holy anger, for the Lord we comfort Zion. It will comfort all our waste places. It will make our wilderness like Eden, a desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in it, thanksgiving, and the voice of melody. That's what I woke up with. But how will God turn a waste places to become like Eden, a wilderness, to be, and, a, and a desert to become like the garden of the Lord? How will the land be filled with joy and gladness in our day? Well, the answer is not far-fetched. The Lord will put his word in our mouth, and as we declare that word over our land, we give God opportunity to establish or porch the skies over our nation and to lay the foundations of our nation aright again. Same Isaiah 51, verses 15 and 16. Isaiah 51, verses 15 and 16. But I am the Lord your God, who divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. And I've put my words in your mouth. I've covered you with the shadow of my hand, that I may plant the heavens. Why does God put the word in our mouth? That he may pour the skies. He may plant the heavens. Establish it. And lay the foundation of the earth and say to Zion, you are my people. I hope you are realizing what your responsibility is or what your responsibilities are in this day by, by being citizens of Zion. It doesn't end there. 
In Isaiah 58 verse 12, I've emphasized that before. It says, those from among you <laughs> is our responsibility. Don't expect America to come and fix Nigeria. Don't expect Chinese doctors or technicians who pretend to be doctors to come here and deceive our people. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the bridge and the restorer of streets to dwell in. Wow, I don't think it can be simpler than that. How are we going to do this? Now, I tell you, there's a technology in the spirit to do this. The anointing of the, on the head of our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, must come upon us. For God so loved the Lord that he gave his only begotten son. Now, whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He did not come to die for Christians alone. He came to die for the people of this world, whether they are Muslims, whether they are Hindus, whether they are whatever religious participation. He came for the whole world. He said, when I'm lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. What is he looking for? The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ and he will reign and we will reign alongside with him forever but listen to me the anointing upon Jesus must come upon the people saved and then must move to their nation and then it must spring forth in the nations of the earth that is transformational power extraordinary let's look at Isaiah 61, and to see you there what began with the Lord will impact his saints, transform their lives and their nations as well as the nations of the earth. Isaiah 61 verse 1, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, one person, and you know that the Lord Jesus, he said that when he came to the synagogue in, in Nazareth, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me, one person, to preach good tidings to the poor, many people. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn well, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, is turning now from the anointing upon him to his own people, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And once they are planted as trees of righteousness in their own country, as those who embrace the principle of winning by righteousness, those who understand that righteousness exalts a nation and that sin is a reproach unto a people. Once those people are firmly established and they are planted as trees of righteousness, they, those trees of righteousness, shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Stop complaining about what's going on in Nigeria. Stop lamenting. We have a responsibility. And when we are equipped and ready, guess what is going to happen? Opportunity will meet preparation. Nobody can take what belongs to us in the fullness of time. What will have to go will have to go. Who will have to shift will be shifted. And God will make a way for us. And we will make a difference in the land. And when that happens, we will not be begging for foreigners to come. They will themselves be coming here as they rushed in those years to Dubai. Many people think it's oil that developed Dubai. No, it's common sense principles of good governance that attracted foreign wealth to them when they began to do what they should do. And they accept you understand that you stifle everything, you kill everything, and capital will fly. But guess what? When the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, are firmly established and they begin to blade, <laughs> play the, the game by the rules, by the book, you will see that all waste places will be rebuilt and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. The sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, nations without God. And in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, 
Now when we land in foreign countries, dogs are waiting for us, sniffing our bags. It's only when I travel from Lagos to London that that happens, or from Lagos to New York. But if I travel within the continent of Europe to another part, dogs don't meet us because they know we carry irrational excrescences to the nation and we have given a bad name to our nation. But guess what? That is changing. I have a word from heaven. It's changing in this season. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. I remember in 1980 and 81, when I began to go to the nations of England or UK, I would get to Harrow to pick shirts and to pick a few things, and right there written in bold colors is, Naira is acceptable here. And you will see languages on the world, Akabo, Kedu, Sonu, on the world of, 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 of Harrods. Until the years of the locusts came, when I first traveled, I bought one dollar eight cents for one naira. Now we have bastardized everything and, and we don't know what we are doing, but guess what? I announced to you there's going to be a change of God in our land. A righteous men will take over and steer the shape of the nation in the right direction in the name of Jesus. And instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering, keep stealing and taking it to church, and appease your conscience and think God will look otherwise. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth, and we make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the posterity whom the Lord has blessed. These are the children that the Lord and uh, God has given me in this season and has given every righteous preacher in this season. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. What's going to happen? From one man, the Lord Jesus himself, who said the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, to those who mourn in Zion, who he gave a, a, a change of garment from the... the Beauty for their ashes and garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The planting of the Lord who will repair the damage that has happened in the land. When that happens, the earth, for as the earth brings forth its blood, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. What we began with the Lord will flow through us, will affect our nation, and will become a sign and wonder to the nations of the earth. And righteousness and praise will spring forth before all the nations of the earth. This is the good news of salvation. That's the title of Isaiah 61. The good news of salvation. That what began with the Lord will impact his sins, transform their lives and their nation, as well as the nations of the earth. Now let's use our God-given authority to pour the heavens today. Wherever you are this morning, let us pour the heavens over our nation and by the word of the Lord, shift the enemies from our territories, the prince of the Niger, and his demonic hosts that have held this nation bound in the inglorious sport of endemic corruption, confusion, deception, and violence in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare today our Father that by awesome deed in righteousness, Lord God Almighty, you will save Nigeria and deliver her from the hosts of darkness. We declare that Jesus is Lord over Nigeria. Nigeria, Nigerians, we from this day experience positive change and this nation will become great in our lifetime in the mighty name of Jesus. Write this down. Today, the 31st day of May 2020, we declare a change of God over our land. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. We command the enemies of the soul of our nation to lose their grip and hold over those in authority in our land in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. How am I sure it shall be? Because the tent of robbers had been prospering for a long time, but God is bringing confusion into their midst in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me Job chapter 12. I'll read from verse number 6. 
Job 12, verse number 6, the tents of robbers prosper. <laughs> and those who provoke God are secure. And look at, at, at thieves and, and bandits in positions of authority who steal everything they can steal, amass everything they can amass, and suddenly they die, they are buried, gone. You don't even know who will take, God Almighty, who will now sit on what you have stolen. The tents of robbers prosper, and those who provoke God are secure in what God provides by his hand. But now as a beast, in case you don't know, go and ask animals, and they will teach you, and the birds of the air, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, and the fish of the sea will explain to you who among all these, if mankind has lost, we have lost our senses, we have lost our value, go to animals and learn from them. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? Does not the ear taste words and the mouth taste its food? Wisdom is with aged men and with length of days understanding. With him, with God, are wisdom and strength. He has counsel and understanding. If he breaks a thing down, he cannot be rebuilt. End of story. If he imprisons a man, there can be no release. If he withholds the waters, they dry up. If he sends them out, they overwhelm the earth. With him as strength and prudence, the deceived and the deceiver are his. Don't worry yourself. When men who have plagued this nation are going to pay for it with their lives, even their children, except they repent, we not partake of the loot and all they have stolen. He leads counselors away plundered and makes fools of the judges. He loosens the burns of kings and binds their ways with a belt. He leads princes away plundered and overthrows the mighty. He deprives the trusted ones of speech and takes away the discernment of the elders. He pours contempt on princes and disarms the mighty. He uncovers deep things out of darkness and brings the shadow of death to light. He makes nations great, underline that that's God Almighty. He makes nations great, and when they don't tow his line, it destroys them. He enlarges nations and guides them. He is the greatest nation builder. He takes away the understanding of the chiefs of the people of the earth and makes them wander in a pathless wilderness. They grow up in the dark without light and it makes them stagger like a drunken man. All those men you think can influence anything now, 22, 2021, 2022, 2023, I laugh because God is going to show who is in charge. Remember, we just one virus. The nations of the earth are trembling before him. I do not want you to fear anymore that those who have oppressed this land will continue to have their day. No, from this day forward, we have declared a change of God and you will see as the land begins to vomit them one after the other in the name of Jesus. Why are you so sure of this? Give me Isaiah 26, verse number 9. Listen to this. With my soul, I've desired you in the night. <laughs> yes, by my spirit within me, I will seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Let grace be shown to the wicked, yet you will not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, it will deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Lord, when your hand is lifted up, they will not see. Many of those politicians, politicians, they are not seeing this money, that the hand of the Lord is lifted over their households, over their plans, that it will dismantle everything they are building, like it did to the chariots of Pharaoh inside the Red Sea. Lord, when your hand is lifted up, they will not see, but they will see and be ashamed for their envy of people. Yes, the fire of your enemies. The fire of your enemies shall devour them. All the fires you have built up, they are coming upon your head. Lord, you will establish peace for us, for you have also done all our works in us. O oh Lord, our God, masters besides you have had dominion over us, but by you only we make mention of your name. They are dead. <laughs> they will not live. They are diseased. They will not rise. Therefore, you have punished and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. 
You have increased the nation, O oh Lord. You have increased the nation. You are glorified. You have expanded all the borders of the land. I want you to see the elimination by substitution that is going on. All the Adonijahs are building their chariots, are building their weapons of war, uh, and they think, well, we will know what to do. No, no, it's too late. It's too late. An announcement had come forth from, the, from heaven and is declared on earth. There's a change of God over Nigeria in the name of Jesus. So like the heroes of faith, we use our faith today. Now for material mesmerism, we use our faith today to subdue kingdoms that have risen within this nation to oppress the people. That's what faith should be used for in this moment. That's what matters most. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 to 34. Hebrews 11, 32 to 34. And what more shall I say for the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel, and the prophets who through faith bought Mercedes Benz, who through faith acquired Phantom uh, Rolls Royce, who through faith built their houses in Lekki Peninsula, in London, in Am No! Who through faith subdued kingdoms! They walk righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouths of lions, you remember Daniel in the lion's den, quench the violence of fire, you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. They became valiant in battle. They turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Every army of the alien plaguing our nation. In the name of Jesus, pack your load and go. In Jesus' mighty name, let my people go and let them be free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me calm down a little because I know it is not by power nor by might as I declare the word. Cosmic battle is raging over our nation and you will see all those you call strong men as they fall one after the other like a, like a, 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 like a, a house of cards, one after the other upon themselves because time had come to set this nation free, not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the living God. Talking of geography, if I cannot finish today, I will continue next Sunday. All that I want to declare has been declared. A new day is here in Nigeria. We are no longer saying Nigeria shall be saved. Mark my word from this day by the power of God Most High. Nigeria is saved by the power of God Most High. Nigeria will begin to experience positive change. And by the power of God Most High, Nigeria will become great in my lifetime. In the mighty name of Jesus. Talking of geography in the spirit, here are some points to ponder. For you to know that what is seen in the natural is determined by what is happening in the realm of the spirit. Point number one. What do you think is responsible for a people to live or behave in a particular way in a given location within a region or a nation while other people not so far from them in the same country or region will behave in the exact opposite way. This is the stop spiritual geography is made up of. Within the same nation, you will see a people determined, a people pursuing great things, a people receiving education, and you will see another set of people who don't care a hoot waiting for those who have walked to gather what they have bought and for them to come and eat. No, no, no. There's something responsible in the realm of the spirit and we need to break that over our nation so that every part of our nation will develop at its own pace and every one of, our, of, of those territories will become free from demonic strongholds. Let me ask you a question. How far is Sodom away from Hebron? <laughs> Genesis chapter 13, verse number 7. When they came out of Egypt, the land could not take both Lot and his uncle Abraham because they were very wealthy. Now, verse 7 says, And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So Abraham said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me if you take the left. Then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, 
Then I will go to the left. How far is right from left? Let's find out. And Lord lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan. If you have been to Israel, you know that there's just a thin line between Jordan and Israel. And Lord lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, it looks good. It looks cool until destruction comes. Like the garden of the Lord, it is it, like the land of Egypt as you go towards Zohar. Then Lord chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lord journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lord dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. That was how rich he was. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abram, after the Lord has separated from him, may God separate you from those who are hindering your blessings today in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord said to Abram, after the Lord has separated from him, lift your eyes now. Lord lifted his own eyes. God commanded the eyes of Abram to be lifted. Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abraham moved his tent and went and dwelt by the ten trees of memory, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. How far is Hebron from Sodom? Time will not permit me, but I'll give you the references. You can check it yourself. In Genesis chapter 18, Almighty God came to the tent of Abraham, and before he departed, he told him that he had had reports that were coming to him by, of the activities of the people in Sodom. And Abraham began to intercede. If you can find 50 men there, if you can find this there, until he got to number 10. If you can find 10 people there, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? He said, no, if I can find 10 righteous people there, I will spare the land. God did not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of what he found there. What destroyed Sodom was he could not find there. The problem of Nigeria is that the righteous men are compromising their values. The moment they get into power, they put their hands in things that will bring shame and ridicule to them instead of maintaining contact without contamination like Daniel did and like Mordecai did, like Ezra did, like J Joseph did in Egypt. That's what a radical revolution of righteousness is what would change our land because the whole earth is in the grip of corruption awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Abraham interceded for Sodom. Well, it was too late. The angels got to Sodom. Oh, the righteous man dwelling in the midst of the wicked rose up and made them come to my house. and said, we are not coming to your house. And he pleaded with them and they came into his house, wash your feet. Exactly the way Abraham received them. He had those things, but he was a saint in a wrong place. You can become guilty by association. That's why you must choose your friends wisely and choose who you relate with. Very wisely. A righteous man chooses his friends wisely. Why? The companions of the wicked will lead them astray. Long story short, they told him, if you have any sons or daughters here or any, like, go and talk to them. When he went to them to talk to them about the disaster that was coming, they laughed at him. That's what you become. You become a joke. When you lower down your guards and compromise your values, you become a joke to those who can be rescued. Instead of winning souls, you will just lose them. And what happened at the end of the day, you know the rest of the story. <laughs> Fire descended, was given a place for the sake of Abraham. Fire descended upon Sodom and Gomorrah, destroyed everything. His wife, remember, is, is, is a trinket, a, a jewelry box, <laughs> and turned back, became a pillar of salt that would eventually be washed away by rain and by wind. And then he ended up uh, committing incest with his own daughters to give birth to Moab and Amnon, who did not enter God's assembly until the 10th generation. Is that the way you want to end your life? As a righteous person, God forbid. But my question is simple. The distance between Sodom and Hebron. Let's see Genesis chapter 19. I will go to the last portion there when that disaster hit. In verse 27 to 29, as Sodom was born in, 
And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where they stood before the Lord, where he was interceding. Then he looked toward Sodom, so he could see it from where he was standing, and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain, and he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land, which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. The Lot have opportunities to repent and, and go back to his uncle and say, look, uh, I'm done. And he did. There was a war that broke out and he was taken captive. It was the same Abraham who went to rescue him. After the rescue, he went back. If your dog is returning to his vomit, disaster can hit you. But you can repent today and say, Lord, I surrender everything, including those in authority whose passion is to steal and whose passion is to live larger than life at the expense of the people of this country. Except you repent. What will befall you will be, will be will, what will fell others before you will be child's play compared to what will befall you this day that this declaration is going forth. At the end of the day, the Bible says, Zohar was given to Lot, a small place to live in. He demanded for it. He was given Zohar to dwell. Zohar means insignificant. That's what it means, insignificant. Do you want to finish your career in Zion and then go build your house in Sodom and end up in Zohar? in an insignificant place, that's why you must make up your mind right now and count the cost. Whether to compromise your ways in order to get to power, and when they give you the crown, they take the scepter away from you, or wait for the Lord to make a way for you at the appropriate time. Why were the people of Sodom not too far from Hebron different? Because of spiritual geography. Number two. It's also geography and the spirit that causes one city within a region to operate under open heavens and another city within the same region to operate under closed heaven. Amos chapter 4, verse 4 to 8. Amos 4, verse 4 to 8. Come to battle and transgress. This is telling you those who go to the house of God to keep on transgressing there. At Gilgal, the place of circumcision, multiply transgression there also. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving 11. Proclaim and announce the free will offerings. For this you love, you children of Israel, says the Lord God. Offering time, blessing time, without checking our lives. As if God can be bribed. And here is the consequences of giving things to God but not giving your life. Also, I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all your places. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. I also withheld rain from you when there were still three months to the harvest. I made it rain on one city. That's within the same country. I would have held rain from another city. One part was rained upon, and where it did not rain, the part withered. So two or three cities wandered to another city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet, you have not returned to me, says the Lord. Why does it rain on a part, and there's so much plenty and abundance, and instead of Rain is one wind of sand and dust that causes blind, blindness to eyes in another part. It's spiritual geography. Amos chapter 8 verse 11 to 12 is it's spiritual geography. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will send a famine on the land, but not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of the hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to east, they shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. May that, not, may that day not dawn upon you and come upon you suddenly, when you begin to hunger and thirst for the true word of God, but all you have in the pulpit are charlatans, making promises they cannot deliver, just to take advantage of the flock. Spiritual geography. We cause it to rain upon one, and not to rain upon another. We cause the word of God to be richly divided, delivered to people, and others to eat garbage that come from, from, from men who, 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 who are deceived and who deceive others. Spiritual geography. Now, just as there was a physical garden of Eden, 
There's also a spiritual Eden today for those who dwell in Zion. That's spiritual geography. Because from Isaiah 51, we have heard, the land before you will turn from wilderness into the garden of the Lord and desert into Eden, spiritual geography. You have what it takes to change your environment. If you are rightly positioned, and if God releases you like an arrow shot into the earth, into a nation, into the seat of power, you can make a difference in no time because Almighty God will support you. Can that really happen? Is there a spiritual Eden? Yes, there is. Joel chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Blow the trumpet where? In Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, the darkest hour of the world is the brightest hour of the dwellers in Zion. The brightest hour of the church, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. Our people come, great and strong, the like of whom has never been, a new generation is about to rise. <laughs> wow, you're going to enjoy this new season in the name of Jesus. Our people come great and strong. You, <laughs> today you call them Almagiris and you look down on them. God is going to do something in the midst of them. They are going to turn against those who stole their heritage and those who, who, who used them and dumped them. A great people! Strong about to come. The like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them. Even for many successful, successive generations. I fire the vows before them. I fire the vows before them. And behind them are flame bonds. The sea world. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. A journalist called me a few days ago and said, what's your opinion about the Almagiris coming to the south? And I asked the journalist, I said, uh, 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 Paulinas, where are you from? He said, um, I am from Bendel. Where are you speaking to me uh, now? He said, I'm speaking to you in Abuja. Is Abuja the place you were born? He said, no, but I'm in Nigeria. I said, Almagiris are Nigerians. We need to fix the problem. And get to the roots of it instead of transporting them from one state to another and deporting them within their own country. Come on, put on your thinking cap. Our governors seek. Can't Nigerians live everywhere? This is why we are demanding for restructuring of the land so that each part can develop and we can invest in the life of our young people and not make them beggars on the streets. Like people who don't care about other human beings. And yet you send your own children to Harvard. You send them to Cambridge. But you use these ones to win election. God looks there on and he will judge it. The land before them will be like Eden. But behind them will be desolate, desert and wilderness. There's geography in the spirit. There's Eden that is physical. There's Eden that is spiritual. Let me round up with this. The same goes for Egypt and Sodom. I'm letting you see that there's geography in the spirit. As there was physical land of Egypt and Sodom, there's also spiritual Egypt and Sodom. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 to 8. Revelation 11, verse 1 to 8. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod. And the angel stood, say, rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. <laughs> God is measuring right now. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, so that they can catch the glimpses of his glory when they come to join us in worship. For it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city under food for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven, so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy, like Elijah. And they have power over waters, to turn them to blood 
and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire, like Moses. And both of them appeared on man transfiguration with Jesus. When they finished their testimony, the beast that are signs out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the streets of the great city. Listen to this. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. I read that one more time. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. The question to ask is, was the Lord crucified in Sodom and Egypt? No, he was crucified in Jerusalem, but the spiritual climate of that city had then become toxic like that of Sodom and Egypt. If you don't believe their spiritual geography, let me drive this point home today. I will continue from here next week by the grace of God. There's geography in the spirit. To drive this point home, let me show you the difference between Jerusalem that now is that is the capital city of ancient and modern Israel, and the Jerusalem which is above, that is the heavenly Jerusalem. Give me Galatians 4, 22 to 31. Thank you. Galatians 4, 22 to 31. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, the son of Agar, Ishmael, was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise. With things are symbolic, for these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem. Wow. Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. Wow. Sinai is in bondage. Jerusalem, which now is, is in bondage. But the Jerusalem above is free which is the mother of us all. The Jerusalem above is free. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so, it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be here with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. And there's something more that I'd like you to see. In Revelation chapter 21, the Jerusalem that is above is clearly revealed there. Jerus Revelation 21 verse 9 then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last place came to me and talked with me saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me what? The great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. A light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone clear as crystal. I think I will stop here. There's a Jerusalem which now is, is in bondage with her children. There's a Jerusalem which is above, which is coming down. Let me share this truth with you today. As true as it is that there's old and new Jerusalem, and as sure as it is there is old and new York, old and new Delhi, old and new Mexico, there shall come out of the old Nigeria, a new Nigeria of our dreams. There's geography in the spirit. We are now recreating in the realm of the spirit, the new Nigeria of our dreams, and in our lifetime, it will manifest. Nigeria is saved. Nigeria has been changed right now, and Nigeria will become great because of the technology in the spirit to recreate a nation that is lost diving and bring it back to fulfill destiny according to the plan and purposes of God. It's at this juncture I will draw the veil this day and trust God to go beyond here to make it plain and simple, to give solution to our leaders regarding our marjories next Sunday by the grace of God. I hope you stay tuned in the name of Jesus. See you in the clouds by God's grace on Wednesday for our online City Impact Bible study at 7 p.m. And especially Saturday this week at 11 a.m. when we'll have the Dominion Partners quarterly seminar 
in the air, in the cloud, with the theme, you are free to dream again because you are citizens of Zion about to enter into a new realm called the new Nigeria. Mark your calendar. Don't forget that. I will look forward to seeing you. Remain blessed and in the loving grip of Jesus. Bye for now. Shalom.